Captain's Log, reporting in from the Heart and Soul Nebulas. I've run out of my boxes of Diso cornflakes. Hell, I ran out of Azure milk at the last nebula. But while my breakfast has been less than complete, my eyes feast upon the local sights. And what a stellar buffet that I have found. Planets that have never felt the gentle touch of a human gaze, happy to be known, to be discovered, to be seen. I've journeyed so far to see what's out here, but always rushing to that next dot on the map. And now, I'm here, and it's time to kick it into slow gear. Take a closer look at just what's out there. When I was growing up back in the deuterium mines, my supervisor used to flog me for mining too slowly, but if I mined too quickly, the other slave boys would beat me. In those dark, noisy tunnels, you had to learn to pace yourself just right. But at the end of the day, as you settled into your pile of rags, prepared to fend off the carnivorous space bats, you'd finally feel that little taste of freedom. No one telling you to slow down or go faster. You could drift off into nightmares as quickly or slowly as you wanted. And out here, farther from human space than I had ever been, recently, I could do whatever I wanted. No one could tell me otherwise. Captain Spatula. Ah, uh, what is it? I've noticed recently that you frequently engage your thrusters to a dangerously high velocity. I'm out of cornflakes, Nova. I'm trying to get this done quickly so I can eat. Piloting the ship on an empty stomach can lead to chemical imbalances. That's bullshit. Mood swings. No, I don't. Or decision making. I choose to ignore you. It would be wise to have something nutritious. Well, will you go to the store and get cornflakes for me then? A little food snack you might want to prepare. It takes just a few minutes to organize, and is delightful. What, you want to give me a recipe? Take a narrow French bread stick. Brush a little angle on each. No. Top the breads with pieces of narcotics, a little black pepper to finish, and you'll have a wonderful culinary treat. Okay, where in the galaxy do people call that a culinary treat? It is illegal in some jurisdictions. You're a jurisdiction! Okay, hey Nova, look, that sounds disgusting, so I'm going to put you back on mute, and we're going to get back to the mission so we can get home, and I can have me a big bowl of diesel corn to satisfy my hunger all proper-like. First, I have to answer the important question all explorers eventually run across. But what would Superman do in this system? He have a red and a yellow sun. Would he have any powers at all? But going further out, there are more valuable neutron stars to visit. Their brightly lit, vibrating plasma arms swirling like a breakdancer stuck in an infinite loop of popping and locking, making the perfect cosmic tornadoes for some risky basking. For those brave or stupid enough to dare to play Russian Relay with the neutron star bugs, apparently some neutron stars have been reported to eject salty tears. But I dare to dare, for when I think about how far I've come, all that I've seen on my great journey, I reflect once more on my mission. All the people I've helped or killed, the codes I've broken, the moons I've despised, all in pursuit of one goal, to unravel the mysterious developer's diabolical plans, get them to reveal to the universe all of their secrets. I was hot to trot to see this through, and to do so I was going to have to keep my eyes peeled. Whatever mystery was hiding out there would likely be hard to find, it's something subtle, something the galaxy had never seen before. My logs may be edited down for brevity, but it was a chore to get here. The Heart and Soul Nebula is far from the bubble. I mean, like, really, really far. Like, even scrolling on the map is painful far. So I was sure whatever out there would be amazing. And that's what I found it. It's another one of those unregistered satellites. How original. Well, even though I had encountered these before, I approached carefully with my guard up at all times on the lookout for Dengus. What do we know about these satellites? Well, they spit out a coded message at specific times, so I'll just have to wait here for an hour, then run the code through a cipher decryptor, then find three to four other satellites and do the same thing, 3,000 light years away in the Hawking's Gap and the complex, and then piece everything together even though it was solved weeks ago on Reddit. Give me the answers, you stupid satellite! Oh! This mystery was turning out to be one tough cookie. But there's no cookie that science can't take a bite out of. If this satellite wasn't going to volunteer the info, I'd have to extract it. So I readied my scientific instruments and began sciencing the shit out of that probe. Interesting reaction to the weapon fire. I've been out of combat so long, I don't know if this is weird or not. But it looks like blood, and my bullets are spiraling. What kind of hack job did that engineer do to my asp? Moving on. I decided to let other commanders collect and decode this box of Cracker Jacks. 
and went on the hunt for unusual planets I could land on, hoping that perhaps I would stumble on some site of great importance by happenstance. Most of life's great discoveries were stumbled upon. Penicillin was discovered by accident via contamination. FTL drives were invented while trying to create a friendship machine. Even Planet Lave was supposed to be a backwater hole, not some prodigious starting location that old people remember fondly. But sometimes things just happen, and I was counting on Lady Luck, and eventually after enough effort, she put out. I found a mysterious planet that seemed to want to shroud itself as I approached. I'd never seen a planet so shy. What could it be shy about? It was time to land and see what secrets I could find. It seemed to me even the shadows jumped when they spotted me looking, flitting to and fro to avoid shadow eye contact. And despite the appearance of day, there seemed to be a dark, ever-present fog preventing me from seeing clearly to the ground. I had to rely solely on my navigational instruments and my gut for guidance, but I headed deeper into the dark shadows. Perhaps this was a sentient shadow creature, or a cloaking experiment gone wrong on a planetary level. Uh, perhaps it was just some unusual local weather or a magnetic storm. Or maybe it was an illusion to hide some nefarious group of plotters. In the dark, I found myself fumbling to avoid rocks, and to find an explanation for this incredible discovery. But when I brought it back to the bubble, people would name shadow planets after me and talk about this find for years. This may not be the discovery I was looking for, but maybe it was the discovery that I deserved. Which means I'm Batman. Well, no, I'm not actually, but uh, I did discover this unique planet with the living shadow, right guys? Like, no one can explain how the shadow planet came to be. Only the shadow knows. And we know it was Spatula who discovered that it was an eclipse and I'm an idiot. Huh. Well, with another mystery debunked, I thought I'd get the best of the situation. Chase down the edge of the eclipse and check another area of the planet. Science always seeks a second sample. But I found the same shadow coating the land. Could it have been a double bluff mystery? Or maybe I just didn't get far enough away. Well, I decided to set some new land record speeds and cover some ground in my SRV. If I don't get to discover a cool shadow planet, at least let me discover some cool SRV power slide techniques. Zoom, zoom, I'm an explorer. I'm zooming on the planet. Okay, okay. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll see the eclipse race across the land. Wait for it. Wait. Whoa, okay. That was actually pretty cool. Whee! That looked amazing. You know, even if the only mysterious thing out here is just those stupid beacons, the whole journey has made me enjoy exploration just a tiny bit more. While some may find it dull, I think they just need to have more narcotic, algae, and black pepper sandwiches. Because, oh my god, they're delicious. But I do wish there were more advanced ways for scanning for anomalies and peeling data out of the cosmos. Perhaps those meddling developers, who I suspect to be changing the timelines from under us, could make some cool changes here. Like being able to launch satellites into nearby systems to scout ahead for materials and anomalies. Or discovering one of thousands of pre-warp civilizations that have, you know, they could just have cool text, text backstories. Or legally abducting those primitive beings and selling them to a black market. Something tells me that the future is in the future, and that redundancy is about being redundant. And that all adds up, the answer being that I have no, no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just a dreamer, an imagineer here, out of the formal Dean Rift. It's going to be a long trip home. Oh, those are part three problems, not mine. To, to the next Angus! Goodbye.